Mentis Wave, a noted self-described right libertarian YouTuber, believes the labor theory of value is fundamentally flawed. The labor theory of value, to most Marxists, is one of the most foundational ideas necessary to understand Marxism. While it holds this important position to self-describe Marxists, many, or even the vast majority of them, have never even ventured into the first 20 pages of Capital to learn what Marx was talking about, which unfortunately leads to widespread misunderstanding of Marx's labor theory of value. Because I believe Mentis to be someone capable of good faith and that there is a severe deficiency in actual Marxist abilities to defend the labor theory of value, I want to respond to his seven-month-old video at the time of recording on the topic and invite him to discuss the problems I have with his video. Perhaps the best way to respond to his criticism is to begin with the end of his video, in which he poses a hypothetical universe, and apply our observations to the earlier parts of his video later on. For example, imagine if the universe was completely devoid of life. Every single planet in the universe is just an empty, barren world. What purpose does this universe have? What value does this universe have? Well, assuming that you can't somehow slip into this universe and steal its resources, and then sell it in a universe where life actually does exist, the value of this isolated, lifeless world is, well, zero. Because value ultimately comes from those of us with a conscious will to give things value. Without living, thinking things to ponder and decide what they want and what they don't want, it doesn't really matter what this hypothetical lifeless universe has in it, does it? And for all we know, this hypothetical universe could actually exist in an alternative dimension somewhere, but it ultimately doesn't matter. There's no one to give it purpose, so it has no purpose. He is exactly correct that in a universe without humans or human-like life, it is not possible to create value in exchange or exchange value. Exchange value is a unique socially constructed value that can only exist in human society. So Mintus and I are in agreement that things can only have a value in exchange because of human relations. Things that have no use value to humans are, of course, in fact, useless. And Marx said as much in Capital Chapter 1, Section 1, where he said, quote, Lastly, nothing can have value without being an object of utility. With the agreement we have that exchange value is something determined by the internal relations of humanity, let's move on to what is the beginning of his video, where he poses a more grounded hypothetical based upon anime pineapples. And for instance, let's say that Reimu here is tired of her other work and has decided to open up a pineapple farm. And to keep things even more simple, we'll just say that she's hired exactly one other local girl in order to help her out in the whole process of growing and then selling pineapples. But of course, here comes the tricky part. What do they sell the pineapples for? How much are the pineapples worth? Does Reimu get to say, well, hey, I've put a lot of time and effort and money into these pineapples, so I'm just going to sell them for $100. Yep, that's right, $100 a pop because I say so. And then nobody buys the pineapples. And why did nobody buy her pineapples? Well, it's pretty simple, because none of her potential customers at the farmer's market were willing to pay $100 for one freaking pineapple. This is because at the end of the day, the value is subjective. And what is it subjective to? The desires of man. And once you've evaluated a lot of customer needs and wants, what you're going to find once you average things out and do some math is that there's going to be a general price where you can sell these pineapples and most people will buy them and you'll still make some kind of decent profit. And that price is going to be based entirely on the subjective demand for pineapples. And thus, Rimu is going to find a sweet spot where she can price her pineapples in a way that she's not giving them away for free, but also not just letting them rot at the farmer stand. And at the end of the day, that price is going to be based on the fact that there is some kind of subjective demand for it. Why is a pineapple not worth $100? Why does it seem so absurd on its face? This question implies another more straightforward question. What determines the pineapple's worth? The answer, of course, is the amount of socially necessary labor time to create said pineapple represented through the universal equivalent, money. Because this pineapple can be exchanged for money, the amount of socially necessary labor time expended on its creation must be proportional to what its money value is. That is, the amount of socially necessary labor time expended on the creation of the pineapple must be relatively equal to any other good that could be exchanged for the same amount of money. This is why what is absurd on its face truly is absurd. The labor time that is socially necessary to create one pineapple is not equivalent to the socially necessary labor time required to create say, a pair of AirPods. 
and we can very, very easily prove this with some really basic reasoning skills. For instance, let's pretend that one day everyone decides that they hate pineapples. For whatever strange reason, nobody's interested in pineapples from this day forward. Nobody wants to buy them, nobody wants to eat them. So now with the demand part of this curve taken away, what is the price of pineapples? Well, now that nobody values pineapples anymore, and the subjective valuation is thus completely gone, this graph ceases to make any sense, because the pineapples have no value. It drops to zero. Or in other words, if nobody wants to buy something, then that something's value is zero. It does not matter how much work and how much investment Vera Remu put into her pineapple farm. If nobody wants to buy her pineapples anymore, tough cookies. Value does not come from her hired help either. The value of her labor, interestingly enough, is also based on the supply and demand curve when it comes to selling your labor. And since pineapples aren't worth anything anymore, well, that unfortunately means that poor Remu now has to close down her pineapple farm. And now her helper is going to have to find somewhere else to work, because again, the profits aren't coming from some surplus labor value like a communist or a socialist would tell you. Her profits are ultimately dependent on her employer being able to pay her, which requires the business to be producing something that people are, again, actually willing to buy. And since people aren't willing to buy pineapples anymore in this hypothetical world, well, it's time to find another thing to do. TLDR, extremely oversimplified, mankind's desires are subjective, and thus man is only willing to trade for things that he actually wants. Things do not just magically have value on their own. This is why I played the last section of his video first, as it shows the absurdity of this line of argumentation. Of course, something that nobody wants holds no value, as it's not useful. Use value, utility, is a prerequisite to exchange value, as we covered earlier. Labor expended on creating things with no use value does not magically give them exchange value, solely because labor was expended. That labor wasn't socially necessary. So if the anime pineapple tycoon decides to harvest and sell these things of no use value to society, it doesn't matter how much labor they expended upon it because the worthless product, at the end of the day, remains worthless. The object produced by labor must have utility to also have value. Mankind's desires are subjective. The value of one's labor changes with time. What is useful one day may not be useful the next, yet it still remains that labor is what determines the exchange value of goods. And yet, there is still a debate. And why is that? Well, because often the business owner ends up making more money than the laborer does. And that's not equality. That's not fair. That feels bad. Almonds activated. Error, error, NPC script, NPC script, critical fault. Truth is not aligning with my truth. Hamster wheel, online. And thus you get communists defending the labor theory of value instead. Claiming that all profit is theft, even though hilariously enough, once you realize where the value is actually coming from, you realize that without any kind of profit, the laborer wouldn't be able to work there either because there would be no incentive for the business to even exist. Just as a side note, Marx in Capital Volume 1 never uses theft to refer to surplus value. Theft appears four times exactly in Capital Volume 1, I looked it up. Uh, once is to refer to the theft of times legally allotted as rest periods by the British government, and the rest referred to government seizure and sale of land in the 17th century. So long as you don't think about it too hard, the claim that the labor theory of value is correct because you can empirically measure the difference between what a laborer earns and the value of the goods they produce, that just might sound like a good argument. It's of course not, and I mean I just explained why it's not, but to the hamster hijacked mind, it can absolutely get a pass. This is the fundamental misunderstanding I believe Mentis has. The labor theory of value is not surplus value, and surplus value is not a wicked immoral evil. It is just a fundamental part of the capitalist system. In order for the capitalists to profit, they must sell goods for greater than their actual value. As without that, the capitalist doesn't make a profit. I hope I was able to you know, make some interesting points, Mentis, and I look forward to hearing what you have to say on this topic. And uh, if you liked watching this video, feel free to give it a like, subscribe, and uh, follow me on X. Thanks for watching. Watch Wayne. Bots them. Learn stop.